Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Wednesday, July 13th, and today we are continuing our study about um, the Greek words for the word vision, because when you look at the definitions, you start to see that there's different kinds. Um, we saw that there was then an apparition on Monday. Yesterday, we saw that there are spectacles where like you can't look away, and today we're moving to the next one. So let's pray. Lord, as we dive into this message, I know that you are continually working and drawing us closer to you. The more we look at what the Bible says and the, what the Bible means, the closer we get to you. The more we understand you, the more you draw us in. Lord, as we spend that time in our prayer closet, let it be productive let it draw us closer to you. Let us hear that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit and let us see everything that you would have us to see. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's word is horasis. And horasis is also a word for vision. It's a little bit different in that um, it's, it's a different kind of vision. Horasis literally means, um, in the Thayer's de definition, it says the act of seeing, the scent of sight, and the eyes. So in this vision, the eyes are involved in some way. When we go to the Strong's definition, it says the act of gazing, that is an, in, an that is external or an, a an aspect or internal and inspired appearance vision or sight. So this is gazing upon something. So when I think about gazing upon something, I kind of think about like watching a sunset. That's what comes to my mind. So it's a little bit different than the apparition and the spectacle. This is um, a little bit more, um, it's like you're, you're, you're looking at it with a long view and you're giving it more of a, it's not a fast thing. So that takes us to 2 Peter, I'm sorry, not 2 Peter. I'm looking at the first name in it. That takes us to Acts 2, 14, 2 um, starting in verse 14, where it says, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed the men. This is where Peter gets up and starts talking to the crowd. Men of Judah and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words, for these people are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. Now to give you the backstory, Pentecost has just happened. These people have um, are speaking all these different tongues and people have been making fun of them saying that they're drunk. But this is what was, in, what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions. That word visions right there is horasis. It's the kind of thing where you're gazing upon something. And your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and my female and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. So this vision is, it, this is a type of vision that does happen. Um, and it's usually kind of a, um, I, I picture it as being a thing that where you're, you're gazing upon it for a longer period of time. The next one I have is Revelation 9, starting in verse 13, and it says, The sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been poor, prepared for the day, the hour, the day, the month, and the year, were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of mounted troops was twice ten thousand was twice ten thousand times ten thousand. I heard their number, and this is how I saw the horses in my vision. Again, that's Horus. He is gazing upon this, and those who rode them, they wore breastplates with the color of fire and of sapphire and of sulfur, and the heads of the horses were like lion's heads and the fire and smoke and the sulfur came out of their mouths. Now here's the tough thing about visions is sometimes you hear words and visions and sometimes you don't, but no matter what, you're always trying to describe what you saw. And sometimes you saw something that is just, 
It doesn't feel like it's describable. You're, you're like, I don't even know how to explain what this looked like. And if you're like me and you're not much of an artist, you can't draw what it looked like. So you're, you're, you know, you kind of feel like you're at a loss. You're like, well, I'm trying to tell you what it looked like, you know? Um, but that's all part of God's plan too. And you need to know that God's going to give you those words that you need as you're describing it and just trust that you, you shared the message the way it needed to be shared. And then in Revelation 4, we see Horasis again. This is starting in verse 1. After this, and look, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard speaking it to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance, now that word appearance is also Horasis of Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance, again, Horasis, at, of an emerald. So in the bottom line is, what does Horasis mean? It means you're gazing upon something and you're describing, and later you're trying to describe, this is what it looked like. It's like you're, you're trying to say, you know, it looked like a door, but it wasn't really a door. You know, it, you're trying to explain it to somebody. So as you go into your prayer closet today, I encourage you to look over those scriptures and really pray over what horosis means. Maybe you've had those visions where you felt like <coughs> you were gazing upon something. I shared a vision that I had had um, last week on Sunday. And when I came through the doorway of this tomb and I looked on the earth from the perspective of outer space, I was gazing upon the earth at that moment. That was a horosis kind of vision. And then all of a sudden it changed drastically and I skyrocketed to the earth very quickly. So, um, you know, all three of these visions do happen. And I'd love to hear your stories. My email is in the description. If you click on the carrot right next to the title, you can shoot me an email and let me know what you've experienced because, you know, God may show you something that I need to hear about. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.